Welcome back to my channel guys. Sorry I haven't really been posting that much this past week or two. I've just been really busy getting back home, bringing all my stuff back. This past week has been pretty crazy in the market and I, I know a lot of people in the chat have been making like nice profits and stuff like that and everyone's been learning. There's some stocks in here that I really want to go over like IO, BLIN and those two specifically because those two specifically got longs trapped in the morning and I know a lot of you beginners like to trade the top percent gainers are the ones that really have a lot of volume as well. So I want to give you guys some tips so you guys aren't really getting trapped in these stocks and so that you guys can kind of understand the psychology of the market as well. So before we get into this video, if you haven't already, I would appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. If you get any value out of this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. And now I'm going to bring you guys into my screen so I can show you a little thing or two. Okay, we're going to start off with BLIN. BLIN, first of all, BLIN is gapping up 113, 14% from the day before. And the first thing I like to do, I want to check the float of the stock. I like to check the float in the market cap. So what I do to check that is just go to yahoofinance.com. And if you click the tab under statistics, you can find all the data and analytics and just everything like that. I recommend using Yahoo Finance for any of that stuff. And right here we can see the market cap of BLIN minus 3 million and the float is only 2.5 million so tiny tiny due to that it's going to be extremely volatile so we know that so one thing you really want to be careful is especially if you are shorting you don't want to get into you don't want to get into anything that doesn't have any resistance the best way to short things like this is you just wait for them to put in their top for the day their high of day and be patient and wait to short those but if you're going long, this is what you need to be careful with. And I'll give you guys two examples. BLIN opened out the gate. BLIN made about a 13 to 14% push instantly. Right away, it dropped right back down. So that's extremely bearish because it had a fast push up the first minute of the day and then gets slapped right back down and does not break the whole dollar three dollar level and one thing you guys are going to want to remember the whole dollars and half dollars are psychological or mental resistances so people use those for their trading as well that's why 295 did not hit three dollars a lot of people risk off of those whole dollar levels so there's a lot of resistance there as well and after you see it just get dumped right back down now shorts are happy because we know longs are trapped up here how do we know that because of the volume the volume is telling us everything and also you can even if you were to go on this at if you were to click time and sales here um, on the tab, you would see all these orders coming through right when the market opens up as well. And you would see this whole thing just flashing green with orders coming through. So we know a lot of longs are getting in. What did I just click? What? Okay, so we know a lot of longs are in at this price range at about the high $2 level almost three dollars a lot of ones are trapped in there because and how do i know again the volume tells me everything so after this dumps i know these longs are trapped up here and they want to get out so what happens when the stock tries to push back just a little bit like right here they're selling to get out the position so it's creating a selling pressure when longs realize this isn't coming back and it's breaking down key levels like this one right here 227 this would be a key level as it's breaking down this level they realize they're wrong it's not going to come back all that selling pressure just sends the stock price down for the whole day if you got to short this this offered a massive gain for a short even after the breakdown level if you got it up here and shorted even to just right here that's a 25 percent gain not even catching the entire move just a piece of the pie I'm gonna pull up IO and show you something really similar. Now if you go to IO, this one was a little safer because I, I believe the float was a little larger on this one, if you're shorting. But I'm gonna show you how the longs got trapped in this one as well. You see on like my TikTok or other videos that I was posting, some of the people that were commenting, some of them did get stuck in that as well. And sometimes th moves like this are kind of predictable because people tend to catch FOMO and just always wanting to catch that first move. Also, if you're a beginner, I recommend not even touching any stock that opens up first 15 minutes of the market. Just be patient. I guarantee you guys' success rate will go up a lot more if you're just a little bit more patient and don't just chase any green that's moving up so now let's let's look at io now i pull up io this is the same thing that happened may 7th io io had the same thing the first strong push out of the morning again a, after a huge gap up the first minute it pushes up doesn't break the four dollars fifty cents level so after this push up you can see it had a failed breakout it tried to hold this level at four dollars it tried to hold the four dollar level it could not hold it and it dumps instantly and i like to call these kill candles and the reason why i like to call them kill candles is because they kind of kill the emotion of the, the longs. And I know they're not gonna wanna get in after they see that type of stuff. So that's the way I like to trade. I like to watch the stocks that have potential for whatever I'm trading. And then I like to watch them choose their direction. And if that direction is the direction I want to go in, then I look for an entry. Like up here, I would not get in. You wouldn't know this is a short. A lot of people made big profits shorting IO, but up here you would still not know this is a short technically because that $4 level didn't break. There was a fake out up here, probably got even more long stuck. 
Look at these volume bars. These volume bars are telling you how many people are getting stuck in these stocks. So with the bigger the volume bar, the more people are in it. So after this dumps, there's even more people in the stock trapped looking for a spot to get out. And a lot of people wait for a spike to get out or a lot of people like to just let the stock come back up so they can at least come close to breaking even. And when that happens, short sellers like to take advantage of that, like myself. So when it pushes back up, you can short those next spikes because we know these people are trapped up here. They're going to try and get out and the trade is done for them. Some of these can be kind of predictable if you can kind of use psychology and reverse psychology on the market. And again, right here, after this key breakdown level, you can see it just, it's washed now. Um, it's an obvious short after that, the first 15 minutes. So that's what I'm saying. If you're long, especially if you're a beginner, if you just wait it out, don't try to guess any of these moves. It doesn't matter what kind of news came out. It doesn't matter if they say they found a cure for the vaccine. I'm what the hell did you just say? I'm telling you, these type of companies, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And if the market was really that easy and things just aligned that perfect, everyone would be millionaires. It's, it's, you have to think a little bit more outside of the box when it comes down to the market. I'm going to pull up SRNE. SRNE had a massive, massive push on Friday. And SRNE actually traded over 500 million volume. I've honestly never seen... 500 million volume traded on a penny stock like this before. It could be a potential short for sure. It's definitely a potential short depending on what it does. But if I show you guys right here, it traded 507 million volume. You can see it off to the left. Um, yesterday I had a low of like $2.56 I believe and then today I had a Friday at a high of $9. What did that massive volume traded tell us? Just like I said on the other ones, it tells us how many people are in the stock as well. So yes, those are the shares traded but it really gives you a good idea who's in the stock or how many people is in the stock. And I can see this mass consolidation around the $7. So it's gonna be huge whether this stock gaps up or gaps down tomorrow. My opinion, if this thing gaps down below this resistance, it's gonna have a hard time breaking through this mass consolidation because of how much volume was traded. But then again, I haven't traded something with this much volume because of the coronavirus going on right now. We have, we have a way above average volume in the market. So if you see things and you don't understand it perfectly or it, or it doesn't fit your criteria or it's a little bit off, it's perfectly fine just to take a step back and use it as a reference. Watch it so you can see that with one that comes up next time, how to react to it. Some people are swinging this and I'm just gonna say, swinging stocks like this is just, is just you're taking a chance. So I personally don't like to hold anything overnight, but I'm just saying to a lot of the beginners that like to hold these type of stocks overnight, you might get lucky sometimes, but I really recommend you don't hold these type of stocks overnight because they can do anything on you. They're, they're this type, they're this price for a reason. I mean, these stocks are penny stocks for a reason. That's why a lot of people are like, oh, you don't look at fundamentals, this, this, and this, and this. Yes, I look at fundamentals to a certain extent, but I know the fundamentals of a penny stock. They're trash. That's why they're a penny stock. If they weren't trash, they wouldn't be a penny stock. And most penny stocks go bankrupt anyways. So that's why I know. I don't really need to know the fundamentals. Mostly penny stocks or small cap stocks are heavily driven off of psychology and just, and just pure technical analysis. So if you're a beginner and you like those lower price stocks, yes, you're gonna have to learn a, a lot more of the psychology and you're gonna, and especially these type of stocks, you can't bag hold. Cause if you try to bag hold these and you, you try to, if you got caught in this dump at $9, second, you don't chase run ups in the midday. I'm gonna just tell you that. Don't chase run ups midday. Don't chase anything at all. Um, not just with SRNE, just like other stocks I seen lately. I can't remember off the top of my head. I believe it was Acre, A K E. A-K-E-R, some longs that were probably chasing midday got stuck in that offering. So yeah, and I, I know a lot of people probably, a lot of beginners especially, probably got stuck in here. And again, like I was saying, see how this got rejected at the $9 level? Whole dollar and half dollars are mental resistances. People love to put their stop losses or people love to get in and out of trades at half dollars and whole dollars. So that's one thing you really have to pay attention to and it's no surprise this capped out at exactly a whole dollar number. And basically, I just wanna share a lot of that because I do have a lot of beginners in my Discord chat and things like that and I just really wanna guide them in the right direction because I see a lot of you guys making the same exact mistakes I made when I first started and I just wanna deter you from that and just let you get through your learning curve a lot faster. One way to really get through your learning curve a lot faster, if you were one person that got stuck in BLIN in the morning spike or if you got stuck in IO in the morning spike, or if you got stuck in the dump at $9 on SRNE, I really hope you guys learned something from that lesson. Because if you don't learn something from your lessons, you're just honestly wasting your time and you're just gonna put yourself through mental gymnastics and stress yourself out for no reason. So if you take a loss or anything like that, make sure you go back and analyze your trades. I learned the most from the trades, even, even if I profit, because 
Um, there's trades I'll have a bad entry, right? And I'm not happy even if I made money on it because it was a bad entry. In the long run, I don't want to be trading like that. So I go back, I analyze, okay, I got in too soon because I saw this or I got in too soon because I saw this. Next time I need to wait for this or this or this or this. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. And even me, myself, like even just through my whole career of trading, I would get stuck kind of making the same mistakes and you'll find yourself making the same mistakes over and over again, especially when it comes down to trading. It can be frustrating sometimes, but if you don't learn from it, then it is a loss. But if you do learn from it, it is more beneficial than your green trades. I promise you. If you just had green trades after green trades after green trades, yes, it might teach you something, but I'm telling you the most successful traders are learning from their mistakes and other people's mistakes. So I just want to share that. Make sure you're learning from other people's mistakes as well. You don't always have to get the blunt of the blow just by you experiencing it firsthand. I really think it's interesting to learn from other people's mistakes because it's just an exponential learning curve. Again, I hope you guys got any value out of the video. And I appreciate the support on this channel. Drop a comment down below what you think, what next videos you would like me to make, whatever concepts you guys want me to expand upon. So if you want to be in a community with other traders, um, the Discord links will be down below. If you want to find me on any of my socials, all those links will be down below as well. Also, our profit mugs right here are now in stock. Um, I was tracking statistics too and I realized people that order that profit mug tend to do better on their trade. Feel free to message me on Instagram or anything like that. I can help you out. And so you really want to put yourself at the best advantage as possible and you want an edge when it comes down to trading. So make sure you check those out and I'll catch you guys in the next video.